This was from March, the year 2000. I said, dear son, you are a young man now, a young man I am godly proud of. I believe I will close this book of letters to you with words about courage. As you know, I admire courage. Men, fathers are to provide, protect, and inspire. Men should live and speak the truth. But more than these basic roles, or at least in addition to these, men should show us courage. Men should show courage to their sons and daughters, to each man's wife, to other men, to his community, his world, to generations that follow, and to God. A man is to demonstrate courage. Now understand me, my son, it is not always courage to fight. It takes courage to walk away, to turn the other cheek, and to surrender the right to revenge. It takes courage to get back up when you've been knocked down and to stand when others run away. Men are to show their sons not only how a man faces death, but how a man faces life. A man doesn't run away when he's afraid. He doesn't run away when it's hard. A man keeps his promises and stays there. That's courage. That's what a man does. Do it better than I have. Show your sons and show our world. Show our God to them. Son, let them say about you, let them say about you in words of deep respect and admiration for generations after you are gone. Not only this is how a good man faces death, but this is how a good man faces life. To my mixed race son, my firstborn, bow your head before God and stand up among men. It is your day. It's your turn. I have been a stranger in a strange land. This world is not my home. Be strong. Be courageous. Live the life. Die the death. I will meet you over there. Love, Dad. I thought I was finished with that, but then something wonderful happened. This was from March 2011. Dear son, Sunday before last, I heard with my own ears you tell me about the birth of your daughter. I cannot tell you how much that means to me. It gives me such a sense of joy and completeness. When I was six, my mother gathered the children together to tell us she was going to have a baby. And not to tell anyone. But at six, I was so excited and happy at the news, her admonition was immediately disregarded. I jumped on my little bicycle and rode all around the neighborhood telling everybody I saw my mom is going to have a baby. The morning you told me of Ember's birth, I stopped on a, at a gas station on our way to church. I walked in the door and threw up my hands and said, my granddaughter was born today. You are overseas now, but we anticipate getting to know this precious girl. I listened as you told me how she is attuned to your voice, that when her eyes were covered as she was being treated for jaundice, you soothed her with your voice. You told me, you said things to her like, we are all here. Everything is okay. You are safe. You are loved. There is nothing to be afraid of. I am right here. The proverb tells us children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. I can hear Father God speak to me and speak to us through your words to your daughter, who cannot yet understand language. She is made to understand love in your presence. I tried to be a good father, to learn from the flaws and mistakes of my fathers before me. Now I want you to be a great husband, a great father, and a great man. Humble is the way. I love you so much. We are all here. Everything is okay. You are safe. You are loved. There is nothing to be afraid of. I am right here. Love, Dad.
Thank you.